In this video, I will help you set up your Windows development environment to work with Salesforce. There are three main things you need to install in Windows uh, to do Salesforce development. The first is the Salesforce CLI, which will let you run commands from your computer uh, that interact with the Salesforce org without having to use the web browser user interface. The second piece is Visual Studio Code, which is what's called an um, integrated development environment. It lets you manage and view files run commands, and a host of other things that help your de development experience. The third leg is a tool called Git, which is a very popular source control tool used by uh, software development teams all over the world. So let's get started. First of all, let's, uh, let's kind of look at our starting environment. So if we open a command prompt by hitting the start key and uh, type CMD, We'll come to a normal command prompt. Now, our work won't be done in here. This is what Visual Studio Code is for, but I want to show you that nothing is actually installed right now. So if I were to type sfdx, which is the Salesforce CLI command, my command prompt will say, sfdx is not a recognized command. It's not installed. So we know that we don't have that installed right now. So we need to close this window. And let's open up a browser window. And let's just search for Salesforce CLI download. And the top option here is what we want. We go directly to a download page. And since we're running Windows, almost all Windows machines are 64-bit. Um, so we want the download for Windows X64. Let's click that and hope my internet is fast. Yes, looks like we'll be under a minute. So. This Salesforce CLI is really just a command line tool that lets us run commands from the command prompt or other applications like Visual Studio Code to do things like log in to Salesforce, um, retrieve source files from Salesforce, deploy source files to Salesforce, um, and really anything you can do through the UI, you can do with commands from the Salesforce CLI. It's the whole point of it. It's just a way to interact with the system without uh, actually having to log in and use the Salesforce uh, user interface. So it looks, looks like we only have a few seconds left. You really got to talk a while so you don't have to go back and spend time editing the video. <laughs> okay, so now that we've downloaded the uh, executable, let's just click on it. And you'll get a prompt asking you for um, uh, administrator permissions to install, which is why the screen went black. And we'll just do straight defaults. You don't have to change anything here on the setup. So we'll just say next. We'll install the program files directory. That's fine. And then this is probably the longest install of the um, of the three legs of this tool. The three programs are going to be installing today. Uh, so I'm going to be quiet here so that I can speed this up later in post production. Okay, now we're all done. That took, in real time, four or five minutes. So not, not the worst thing in the world unless you're just sitting here uh, with your face in front of a camera. Okay, so let's close that. We've installed successfully. Now let's go open a new command prompt. Make sure it's new because uh, the existing command prompt, if I were to open it, it wouldn't know the application had been installed yet. So let's hit the um, window key R to uh, open the run window. You can also hit start and type command and that'll come up with a command prompt, same thing. So we'll click on that, get a command prompt. And this time, if we type SFDX, we should get the help screen or the, uh, the help text. First time it runs always takes a, a second. And I am impatient, so I will hit the enter key for no reason. Absolutely helps nothing. There we go. So SFDX is installed, and here is the um, the help prompts for how to use this from the command line. Now, because we will be installing Visual Studio Code, we won't use the SFDX commands from the command line too often, but there are a few that you're going to want to know. And one of the main ones, just to prove that uh, 
the Salesforce CLI is installed and doing something interesting, one of the main ones you're going to want is the, or the ones around the organizations. So if we say SFDX force org list, that will list all of the orgs that we have currently authorized in the Salesforce CLI. If you see my other videos, I've gone through this <laughs> a couple of times because they're very useful. So I have no orgs authorized right now. So if I want to authorize an org, I would say SFDX force or uh, force off web login. And we're going to say, I'm just going to say dev, dev org as the alias. So the dash A stands for alias. We're giving the normal long username and domain name uh, an alias of dev org. So this will open up a, uh, a browser window to the Salesforce login prompt. And here we go. And I have, my browser has a, a username and password already loaded up. So I'll just log into my dev org. And we're in. So now if I go back to my command prompt down here and I run, hit the arrow, up arrow to run my force org list, I should see uh, my org authorized with an alias of dev org. So there you go. So you can see that from our computer, we can start interacting with our Salesforce org from the command prompt. Great. So we have one leg of this three-legged stool installed. Uh, the next big piece is going to be Visual Studio Code which is a integrated development environment written by Microsoft. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our browser window and we'll search for Visual Studio Code download. And this top link right here is what we want. And since we are uh, Windows 64-bit, we want the user installer x64, so right there. So we'll download that guy, less than 100 megabit or megabytes, um, so it shouldn't take too long. So Visual Studio Code uh, will be the thing that we interact with the most. Uh, it really, it's just it's the center of your de development environment in Windows uh, when you're working with Salesforce customizations. You're going to be able to run um, command prompt commands from the terminal there. You'll be able to interact with a Git from there. You'll interact from the, with the file system from there. Uh, you will be able to run CLI commands through the command palette and from the context, right-click context menu uh, on the file, uh, the file view of Visual Studio Code. So it's a really, really powerful tool that you should get used to using. Okay, so our file is downloaded. Let's run that. I did indeed run it. Okay, accept the agreement. And you can just go straight to faults here. Just don't think, just hit next, just go. Unless there's something in there you really care about, which the defaults will work just fine. Okay, we're done. And that took less than a minute in real time. So that was, that was pretty painless. Okay, so we're gonna launch Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that we have Visual Studio Code open, what I like to do, because this is an application, if you're doing Salesforce development on a daily basis, you're gonna need this a lot. So I like to go in here and I will pin this to the taskbar. So now if we close Visual Studio Code, it still stays there. We don't have to go into the start menu and type Visual Studio Code and open up this way. We can just go to our taskbar, open up the application without any, any fussing. Okay, so now that we're in here, uh, I'd like to show you the terminal window first. So a terminal window, new terminal, is basically the same thing as the command prompt that we're using earlier. So if I do sfdx force org list like we did earlier, I will get a list of my Salesforce orgs that I've authorized, which at this point is just the one dev org. Okay, great. Um, but there's more to it than that. This isn't the only way that Visual Studio Code can interact with the Salesforce CLI. So if we go to Control Shift P brings up the command palette. If I type in SFDX, there's nothing in here. 
but we can install something that will put things in here that are very useful. So what we need to do is go to this little uh, icon with the four blocks called extensions. And if you type in the word Salesforce, it'll come up with a bunch of Salesforce specific integrations or uh, extensions. Now, if you click on this top one, it will explicitly say, do not install me by myself. So if I can find the scroll bar here, do not install this extension directly right here. Install the complete Salesforce extension pack instead. So let's listen to what they tell us and let's go to the Salesforce, Salesforce extension pack instead. So let's install that. Now, as that's installed, we can go look and see what's included in this pack. So you can see the top one is the Salesforce CLI integration that shows up on the top of this list when you type Salesforce. I don't know if there's a way they could uh, change the alphabetical order so that the one you actually need to install shows up on the top, but that's what's happening. So we install the Salesforce CLI integration, some Apex tools. There's a bunch of stuff in here you can go look through uh, that will help make your development experience easier. Uh, commands that Salesforce uses will start showing up in right-click context menus. Uh, you'll get syntax highlighting, I believe, a bunch of other nice things. So this takes just a little bit to install. Okay, that took about three minutes of real time. So now we are back. We've installed the extension pack. So let's close that out. Now, if we go to the command palette again, Control Shift P, you can now see we get some SFDX commands. Uh, so now we can create projects. Uh, we can set default um, orgs. We can do all kinds of cool things. So Visual Studio Code, Salesforce CLI set up. We got two legs of the stool done. We only need one more. We need to get, get installed. Now, if we in Visual Studio Code, go to this icon here that says source control when you hover over it, you can click on that, which is really kind of the official logo for Git if you've ever seen it. Click on that and it will actually say, this is where you go and download Git for Windows. So this is probably the easiest way to, to figure out how to download and install Git. So let's just click that button and Yes, we want them to take us to the external website where we can download Git. And once again, we are 64-bit Windows, oh, which is the top one right here. So I can do the top link right there. And we have another short download under 50 or about 50 megabytes. Okay, now that our Git is an install file has downloaded, let's click on that. And once again, this will be an installer with a lot of options that you really just don't care about. So you hit next. Program files is fine. Oh, I already have that folder because I've installed Git before. Next, next, next. Let Git decide, next, we don't care. We're really just going to be using get from Visual Studio Code, so none of these options really matter to us. All the defaults are fine. Okay, now we've installed Git. We don't care about the release notes. Finish that, close the browser. And you can see here, Visual Studio Code doesn't yet know that we have Git installed. So let's, let's close Visual Studio Code and reopen it. Now, if we go back to the source control button or icon, uh, it gives us different options. Now it doesn't say you need to download Git because Git's already installed. And in fact, if you are into the command prompt, you can use Git from the terminal window. And you can see it didn't say unknown command. It said, here is the help and the usage for the Git application on the command line. So Git is installed on the computer independent of Visual Studio Code, and there are many ways to interact with it. But for right now, we're just worried about the Visual Studio Code way. Okay, so now we have 
the three major legs of the stool all installed. Salesforce CLI, Visual Studio Code, and Git all uh, set up and running. So just to demonstrate how you would uh, hook this up to GitHub, for example, let's go to Clone Repository. And we'll say Clone from GitHub. And then you're going to get a window the first time that says uh, that GitHub wants to log into your GitHub account. So let's say Allow. And this should take us to github.com, which I am not currently logged into. So I obviously have an account with GitHub, and here's my username that pops up automatically. But if this is your first time, you go to create an account, and you can sign up through their, their form. I'm not going to go further along this path, but it's pretty straightforward. So if we do go back to the sign-in page, and I just sign in with my credentials, And then we say open Visual Studio Code and say yes, we're allowing Visual Studio Code to uh, access that. I get a list of all the repositories on my GitHub account. So if you've seen any of my other videos, one of them, one of the repositories I use is the client intake flow. So we can click on that and then choose a local folder that we want those files to go into. And I always pick my SRC folder for source. And we're going to clone that repository. And yes, we would like to open the clone repository. And here we are. We have all of the files that represent our simple flow that we made in another video. So that's it. Once you get to this point, you are all set up. And you can interact with your Salesforce org, Git, and GitHub through Visual Studio Code. So congratulations. And thank you for watching.